Hello friends, this is Miss Ella. Welcome to another lesson of Harmony at Home. I hope you had some time this week to listen to some of Mozart's pieces and discover more of his wonderful music. As I told you last week, today we will discover the woodwind family. Do you remember that the instruments in the orchestra are divided into different families? We already discovered a few weeks ago the string family. And today we will talk about another family, the woodwind family. I even invited some special guests to join us today to show you their instruments. But first, let's play our weekly game. In the last few weeks, we learned the names of the notes and we discovered that each note has not only a name, but also a pitch. Do you remember their names? Let's review the notes one more time. We will need them for a new game. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, and Ti. Good. Today we will learn how to go up and down the stairs with these notes. You will see that it's like a pattern. I'm sure you all know what a pattern is, but did you know that there are also musical patterns? In our pattern today, there will be one note added each time. We will use this pattern in the next few lessons for our game. For now, I need you to repeat after me, but soon enough you will understand the pattern and you will know it by heart. Let's start. Do, 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 re, do. Very good! Now that you understand the pattern, let's sing it one more time. But this time you don't need to repeat after me. You can just sing at the same time as me. Ready? No! We will sing it a little bit faster. Ready? And... Do, do, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Was it hard? We need to stay focused to know when to go down the stairs. This week, you can practice this pattern. Once you know it, we will be able to use it for a fun game. As I mentioned before, our lesson today is about the woodwind family. That's the family that sits behind the string family in the orchestra. There are four instruments in this family flute, oboe, clarinet, and bassoon. Although they are all part of the woodwind family, the flute is made out of metal. The reason it is part of this family is that originally it was made out of wood as well. One of the most interesting things about this family is that each of the instruments is very different from the other. Do you remember the string family? They all have four strings and you play them with a bow or by pinching the strings. Remember, we call it pizzicato. Of course, there is a difference between a violin and a double bass. 
the pitches of the violin and viola are higher than those of the larger cello and double bass. But all of these instruments produce a sound in the same way. In the woodwind family, all of the instruments use air to make a sound, but you will learn that musicians blow air into these instruments in very different ways and make very different sounds. Today I have invited four musicians who each play different woodwind instruments as part of a group. The name of this group is Emani Winds and they have been performing together for more than 20 years. Actually, there are five members in this group, but one of them plays a brass instrument that belongs to another family of instruments. We will discover the brass family later this year. The four instruments you are going to discover today are the flute, the oboe, the clarinet and the bassoon. Let's meet our special guests, the members of Emani Winds. I'm sure you will learn some fascinating things about their instruments. Hello, Brandon. I think we should start with you, since you are the flute player, the highest instrument in your group. Can you introduce us to your instrument? Hi, Miss Ella. I am Brandon, and I am the flute player of Imani Wind. I joined the group in 2018, so about three years ago now, and I began playing the flute actually when I was in the fourth grade. And I remember I wanted to play the flute because I was drawn to the beautiful sound that it could make, that it could play very low and very high, that I heard it in cartoons and movies, and that I could join my school's band program that would give me an opportunity to make music with other young students. That was very, very exciting for me. But unfortunately, when I tried out for the band the first time, I could not make a sound. I couldn't make a sound because I couldn't figure out how do we get sound over this thing that we call the head joint. I blew into the head joint. I didn't get anything. I tried to blow on the side of the head joint. I didn't get anything. So it took a long time for me to figure out that the way we get sound on the flute is unlike any other wind instrument and that's by blowing across the hole. That's like what you do when you blow over a soda bottle and you get this nice low tone, right? That's what we do on the flute. We blow across this hole. And once I figured that out and then I could make a sound, I could then get excited about the keys and the keys help us make the tube longer and shorter so that air can escape and play higher or lower. I'll show you. The flute is a woodwind instrument and is in the woodwind family. It is a, the highest voice in the wind quintet and in the wind section of a symphony orchestra. But you might be wondering, why is the flute considered to be a woodwind instrument? Because the flute that you see here is made out of silver. Well, historically, flutes have been made out of wood. For actually hundreds of years, flutes were made out of wood. And only around, I'd say, the 19th century, so we're talking about in the 1860s, people decided we need an instrument that has more power. We need a flute that can compete with the instruments in the symphony orchestra, with all of those violins and the big brass sections. And concert halls were getting larger and we needed to have a lot of sound. So composers decided, well, composers decided they wanted to write for instruments that had more power. Instrument makers had to find a way to compete. So now we play flutes that are made out of silver, some are made out of gold, and some are even made out of platinum. Sometimes I even play a platinum flute that's very heavy. The flute, um, I just love the flute that it allows me to play beautiful melodies uh, and lots of fast, happy passages. Sometimes it sounds like a bird, but I'm going to play for you a little bit that sounds very melodic so that you can get to hear the sound of the flute.
Thank you, Brandon. What a beautiful sound the flute makes. Do you remember which instrument sits next to the flute in the orchestra? It is the oboe. Let's meet Toyan and learn about this unusual instrument. Hello, Miss Ella, and hello to the students of the Harmony at Home program. I am holding in my hands the oboe. The oboe is a double reed instrument, and this is a double reed. Why is that important? Because the double reed is where I make the sound of the oboe. This is two pieces of wood that are put together. See how there are two pieces here? And I blow in the little hole in between them. And blowing in that hole makes a sound that makes the whole oboe work. Now you put that glorious sound into the oboe and it sounds really beautiful. Now, the oboe has not that many notes when it's compared to the, its friends, the bassoon or the clarinet. It only has a very small range. But because we have a small range, we have to do a lot with the little we have. And so that's a kind of good lesson for life. Sometimes you have to do a lot with just a little. So listen to the range of the oboe, and I will give you also a range of that dynamics and the range of the kind of feelings we can create with the oboe. <laughs> That is the gorgeous oboe. Now, let's talk beauty. There is a beautiful song that we all are gonna play for you, and Brandon just played it so beautifully. It's called Afro Blue, and I think it sounds really great on the oboe. Shall we hear it? Thank you so much, Toyan, for this lovely demonstration. Could you see and hear how different the flute and the oboe are from each other? Let's meet the third member of the group, and you will see that here again, this next instrument is very different from the flute and the oboe you just met. Hello, Mark. We have already met your friends who play the flute and the oboe and we would love to hear from you about the clarinet. Hi, Miss Ella, and hello to all the Harmony at Home students. My name is Mark, and I play this instrument here, the clarinet. It's an instrument that I really love. I've been playing it for over 20 years. So let's talk about it. How do I create my sound on this instrument? Well, every sound needs a vibration, right? And the key to making that vibration with this instrument is this thing here, the reed. So without the reed, <laughs> I get nothing. And with just the reed alone, right, I also get nothing. But when I take the reed and I put it on the mouthpiece here, you'll start to hear a sound. Check this out. Right, so now we have a vibration, we have a sound. It doesn't sound great yet though, right? So I'm gonna add one more piece to the clarinet. And you hear the sound getting lower, right, and darker. And then when I add the full clarinet. Now we have the full sound of the instrument, right? 
What I love about this instrument is that it can play super, super quiet and very loud, pretty low, and also really high. So it has a huge range, both in terms of the notes it can play and how loud it can play them. So check this out. This is soft. <laughs> and really loud, right? And here's pretty low. And really high, right? So that's the range. I love that about the instrument. You also can hear this instrument in all different kinds of music, from classical music like this, even to jazz music. Right? And you hear it in klezmer music, folk music all around the country and the world. It's just really an amazing instrument. So I'm going to play you off with a song that we play in my wind quintet, Imani Winds, called Afro Blue. And you can hear the clarinet in a different context. Check this out. So that's the clarinet in a nutshell. I hope you guys have a chance to one day try this instrument or at least get to listen to it as much as you can. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mark. I have to confess that the clarinet is my favorite of all instruments because that's the instrument that I play. So we already know about the flute, the oboe, and the clarinet. We still need to meet the fourth and final wind instrument the one that plays the lowest pitches. Let's meet Monica, the bassoon player. Hi, Miss Ella, and hello to all the Harmony at Home students. My name is Monica Ellis, and I play the bassoon. The bassoon is a really special instrument, so I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about it. Firstly, the way that the bassoon makes it sound is very similar to another instrument in the wind family, and that instrument is the oboe. The oboe and the bassoon are kind of related in that we both play on a double reed. This double reed causes the vibration for all the sound to happen for the bassoon. Now, this vibration on the double reed is a little strange, but I want to play it for you anyway. It sounds like this. Not so good by itself, but the bassoon really needs it because without it, nothing happens. So when we put the double reed on the bassoon, we hope some beautiful music will be made. Now the range of the bassoon is pretty large. As you can see, it's a, it's a big instrument. So the bigger the instrument, the lower it goes. But the fact that the air goes through this tube and then down here and it wraps back around and comes out the other side kind of makes this two instruments in one. So for that reason, the bassoon can play really low, but it also plays really high. It has about a three and a half octave range. So I'll play you the lowest instrument on the lowest note on the instrument, and then I'll go all the way up to one of the highest notes. Uh, 
technical instrument, the bassoon. It can play music that is really classical, like Mozart. <laughs> Now I'll play for you a little song called Afro Blue. Hope you enjoy. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Monica. The rich sound of the bassoon has a lot of personality. Did you notice that our friends from Imani Winds all played the same tune at the end of their presentations? Did you hear how different it sounds played on each instrument? They are all members of the same family, but at the same time, they are so different. Do you remember you learned the word timbre when you met the group So Percussion? Timbre means the color or characteristics of the sound. And we can definitely say that the timbre of every instrument in the woodwind family is unique. Now that you know a bit more about the woodwind instruments, let's listen to a piece written for these instruments. When four instruments play together, we call it a quartet. This quartet was written by a French composer named Eugène Bozza. The name of the piece is Three pieces for a night music. And this is another example of chamber music. Do you remember what chamber music is? A musical piece written for a small group of musicians. We will listen today to the second piece. Do you remember the word tempo? This is the word we use when we talk about the speed of the beat or the speed of the piece. I would like you to listen to the beginning of the piece and pay attention to the tempo. Is it fast? Is it slow? Let's listen. So, what do you think? They were playing at a fast tempo, right? In this piece, the second movement is the fastest one and the first and third are in a moderate tempo. Now I would like you to pay attention to the melody the instruments are playing. When a composer writes music, he can have a long melody in his head that he will write down as his theme for the piece, or he can write a short fragment that will be used through the piece. We call it a motif. Do you remember what a motif is? We talked about it when we listened to Bach's third Brandenburg concerto a few weeks ago. A motif is a short musical idea that will be repeated in different ways through the piece. In Bozza's quartet, there are five notes going up that he will use as a motif through his second movement. La 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 la. Let's listen and try to hear those five notes going up. Remember, it can be played by any of the instruments. 
Listen carefully, we already know that the tempo is fast, so pay attention. So, did you hear those five notes going up? Let's sing them together. Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Sing it with me. And Do, re, mi, fa, sol. Now, don't forget that the tempo of this piece is fast and we were singing the notes slowly. So, we will need to listen carefully to be sure we recognize them when the quartet is playing. You can even hear the melody that is based on these five notes. Let me sing it slowly. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, 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 la. One more time, faster. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, 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 la. Now let's listen again. I am sure you will recognize this motif now that you know it better. As I already told you, a motif can be repeated in different ways. This motif can start with a different note, for example, but it will still have five notes going up. Or the composer can decide to use it in a new way. Starting the motif with a different note might give it a new sound. Let's see how it can be done. Bozza, the composer, We'll use the same five notes in a different way as well, and I would like you to find it. Listen carefully to the bassoon and the oboe, since the clarinet and the flute will be playing the motif of five notes going up that we have already heard. So, did you notice what the bassoon and the oboe were playing? They were playing the same five notes as the clarinet and the flute only they were playing it by starting with the fifth note and going down to the first one. Let's listen again to these five notes going down. Now let's sing both parts. The clarinet and the flute were playing Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La and the bassoon and the oboe were playing La, So, Fa, Mi, Re. Sing it with me. Going up, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, and going down, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re. Using the same five notes, going up and going down is really clever, don't you think? To end this lesson, I would like us to listen to the end of this second movement. Are the instruments playing the motif? Is the motif going up, going down? Let's listen. So, what do you think? Bozza is actually using this motif, but he doesn't stop after five notes. It goes all the way up and then down by using jumps. If it was too fast for you to hear, you can always go back and listen to the end one more time. You can also listen to the whole movement and try to hear the elements we have talked about today. And you can even listen to the other movements later this week. It's a beautiful piece and I'm sure you will like it. Today we learned all about the woodwind family. Do you remember the four instruments we discovered? The flute, oboe, clarinet and bassoon. Which one do you prefer? Which timbre did you like the most? Each one has a special timbre. Each one is unique and beautiful in its own way. 
That's it for today's lesson. Next time, we will learn a new song and we will even prepare a percussion instrument. So don't forget to join me. I will see you next week. And until then, make it a musical week. Mm -hmm.